Hi, I'm Nick Pregnance with DuramaxTuner.com. Behind me we have the Apache Max. Monster 1958 Apache we built over three years. 2003 running gear LB7, Duramax, Allison, some cool wheels, paint job. I mean we did a lot more in three years, but it's a bad machine. Generally about 800 horsepower to the tire. It's got a Stealth 67 G2 on it. It's got 100% over injectors and a 10 mil, 12 mil pump. Almost got me there. What we're going to use the Apache Max for on this project is to test Edelbrock's new cylinder head. Now, anybody who's been in the performance Duramax game for any length of time knows that there is no aftermarket cylinder head that is a true aftermarket casting that has uh, coolant able to flow through it. So there's some CNC ported stock castings and there's some billet aluminum cylinder heads that don't allow coolant flow through them. So kind of competition use only stuff. But Edelbrock stuff is carb certified coolant flows through it, and it is a true aftermarket casting. These heads come loaded with some awesome features. It's like anywhere Edelbrock saw that they could take some liberty to improve these things against factory, they did. So not just flow, but flow is definitely improved. Intake, stock, 180 CFM at 400 lift. With Edelbrock's heads, 220 CFM at 400 lift. On the exhaust, we go from 150 to 190 at 400. We got upgraded valve springs. We go to 105 pound spring on the seat. We got upgraded valves, so we go to Inconel and stainless steel valves. We unshroud the valves from the head. So really, you know, any opportunity that's there to improve these things, they did it. Now really, the question from here is, how does it translate to the truck and the dyno and the performance of the vehicle? And that's what we aim to find out. The only thing we're gonna change on the Apache for this test is the cylinder heads. We're not gonna change anything to the fuel system, anything to the turbocharger, uh, just strict A-B test. Now in order to gain access to the cylinder heads on the Apache, we pull the body off of it and just work on the heads right there on the chassis. Makes for an easy swap. At the level these heads are designed to compete in the marketplace, it's my assumption that a lot of them are going to get bolted on engines that are already on engine stands, destined for sled pulling trucks, competition trucks, you know, really high horsepower stuff. But in the event that you're going to put these heads on your truck that's running on the street or that, uh, you know, you already have the engine in, it's about a 32 hour job. So before we tore the Apache apart, we ran it on the dyno. And it's not just one run on the dyno, we're running each tune. So we have a, tunes that start at 630 horsepower and go up past 800 horsepower. We ran five tunes on the dyno, we ran multiple runs of each tune, and we got horsepower, torque numbers, and boost numbers. So we want to see how well the engine's breathing and we want to see its ability to make power. Now keep in mind the Apache has an air to water intercooler, so we're maintaining an ice bath in the intercooler for each of these runs. Our goal here is consistency. We want to see that these dyno graphs overlay, overlay right on top of each other. That way we know that the truck is consistent and that our comparison data, that is what we tell you about how well these heads work, is consistent. All right, so we put our time in. We got the heads, we installed them on the truck, we ran the dyno tests. This is what you want to know. Tune one. Stock heads, 647 horsepower, 1,257 foot-pounds of torque. Edelbrock, 660 horsepower, 1,310. So we're up 13 horsepower and 53 foot-pounds of torque. Tune two, stock heads laid down 734 and 1,460. Edelbrock heads, 734 and 1,531. Same horsepower number, but 71 more foot-pounds of torque with the Edelbrock heads. Tune three. Stock heads, 793, 1585. Edelbrock, 795, 1656. Up two horsepower, and again, 71 foot-pounds of torque. Tune four. You know, and this is where it starts to get a little interesting. And I feel like in the interest of clarity, I'm just gonna share with you that our stock heads did have bigger valve springs, although they had stock port work in them. That might account for what we're starting to see here as the drive pressure number com comes up and we start to push the turbocharger towards its limit. So, with the stock heads, 823 horsepower and 1679. Edelbrock heads, 813, 1723. Meaning that the stock heads were actually up 10 horsepower at peak over the Edelbrock heads, even though we got an extra 44 foot-pounds of torque out of the Edelbrock set. It's clear things are tight here. There's not, there's not much difference. Tune five, we've got the same story. 841 and 1679 on the stock heads. Edelbrock shows 828 and 1756. So we're really we're, th we're within 2% of peak horsepower, stock heads edging out Edelbrocks at this level. And again, those are stocks with very large valve springs in them. And the uh, Edelbrock heads are just inching out 5% on torque. So they're trading punches. Okay, so around peak numbers, in summary, 
We were 2% up at the low end and we're 2% down on the big end. My hunch is the valve springs aren't strong enough to handle that turbocharger at its bleeding edge limit or aren't, aren't as strong as the valve springs that were in the stock heads. And my hunch is that's kind of what the difference is here. I'm not 100% sure. All I have is the data and my theory, right? But long story short, <clears throat> there's not a whole lot of difference at peak. The interesting thing that we saw when we looked at the horsepower curves is not just the peak story. So on either end of peak, you have the torque number. So, you know, if you look at 2,350 RPM instead of 3,250, you get to see how strong the engine is at, at low RPM, the torque number. And then you have horsepower past peak. So sled, pull, sled pullers will know all about this. As you go past peak horsepower, that 3,200 RPM number, and you start getting at the peak of the track and you're running 4,000, 4,000, 4,200 RPM, you want the truck to still be making power. You want the truck to still be able to breathe well there. And what we saw on the trend lines for horsepower is that past peak, the Edelbrock heads carried that horsepower better than the stock heads did. So even though they're down, they're down on power past peak, they're still breathing decently well up top. And we saw that reflected in the average horsepower numbers. Now let's talk average horsepower. What the hell is average horsepower? We're not running power generators here. You're not running one constant RPM. You're going to your shift point, you're shifting, you're coming back down into the meat of the rev range. And that's what this discussion is geared towards. So we're going to look at from 2350 to 3200 RPM, and we're going to measure the area under the curve for that whole part of the dyno graph. Tune one. On the stock heads, we averaged 618 horsepower and 1183 on torque. Edelbrock heads averaged 633 and 1209, giving the Edelbrock uh, the edge by 15 horsepower and 26 foot-pounds. Tune two, 700 horsepower and 1341 from the stock heads, 713, 1365 from Edelbrock, netting an average gain of 13 horsepower and 24 foot-pounds for Edelbrock. Tune three, stock heads came in at 745 and 1427, while the Edelbrock heads went 770 and 1474. That was our highest gain with the Edelbrock heads, a 25 average horsepower and 47 average foot-pounds of torque. Tune 4, Edelbrock heads gained 11 horsepower and 26 foot-pounds of torque more. In Tune 5, we're seeing the limits of the 105 valve springs here because we recorded the stock heads did 808 and 1544 on average, while Edelbrock heads did an average of 792 and 1516. All right, so we talked about the data. Now the question is, who do these heads really fit? And I think for that answer, you have to look to the competitive sled pulling classes. You got to look to those guys who are using their trucks well past and well below the peak RPM ranges and using their trucks under high load. So yes, the trucks might make peak power at 3,200 RPM, 3,300 RPM, depending on which turbo class you're in. But when you're going down the track, you're seeing 41, 42, 4,500 RPM, and you might be getting drugged back to 26, 2,700 RPM. So it's not just about how much difference in the peak power areas, it's about if you go to the end of the operating range during that sled pull, and you're looking at how much difference there is on the ends of those power curves, then you're gonna see much bigger numbers. And in those classes, 20 horsepower, 30 horsepower, that can be the difference between a foot, two feet. That's all it takes to win. Anyway, I hope this was interesting. Hope you guys learned something. I'm Nick Pregnance, DuramaxTuner.com. Love bringing you guys cool information. We'll see you next time.